Thomas Ash. Thomas Patrick Ash, 12th January 1885-25 September 1917, was a member of the Gaelic League, the Gaelic Athletic Association, the Irish Republican Brotherhood IRB, and a founding member of the Irish Volunteers. Background Thomas Ash was born in the townland of Kinard East, Lisville, Dingle, County Kerry, Ireland, to Gregory Ash D. 1927, a farmer, and his wife Phil and Hannafin, on 12 January 1885, according to his baptismal record, and his sister Nora, or 50 March 1885, according to state birth records. His is a family of ten, seven boys, and three girls. Thomas was the seventh child, with three brothers following him. His mother died aged 58, some years before Thomas died. Both Irish and English were spoken in the house, with Thomas's father being a great Irish scholar and learners of Irish used to come to listen to his stories. Having entered a La Salle training college, Waterford, in 1905 he began his teaching career as principal of Court of National School, Losk, County Dublin, in 1908. He taught Irish in Court of School. He was fond of the Irish language and started branches of the Gaelic League in Scaries and other neighbouring villages. According to his sister Nora, he would get the children to march over a Union Jack. Ash was a member of the Irish National Teachers Organisation. He spent his last years before his death teaching children in Lusk, where he founded the award-winning Lusk Black Raven Pipe Band as well as Rand Tower's Lusk Gaelic Athletic Association GAA Club in 1906. Prior to the Rising, Ash joined the Irish Volunteers upon its foundation in November 1913. He was a member of the Keating branch of the Gaelic League. He was a member of the Lusk Company of the Volunteers and probably founded it. He sat on the governing body of the Gaelic League and collected considerable sums of money during a trip to the United States of America in 1914 for both the Volunteers and the League. I supported the striking workers during the 1913 Dublin lockout saying we're all here on lock inside. He'll beat hell out of this nomish, mean, so on in employers yet, and more power to him. Easter Rising Commanding the Fingal Battalion, 5th Battalion of the Irish Volunteers, Ash took a major part in the 1916 Easter Rising outside the capital city. Ash was commandant of 5th Battalion of the Dublin Brigade, a force of 60-70 men engaged British forces around North County Dublin during the Rising. Ash was sent to messenger Molly Adrian by Pierce with orders to hold the main road from Ferry House. She was sent back to report to Connolly, who returned an order to send 40 men to the GPO. Ash was only able to send 20 due to his shortage of men. He was to contact 1st Battalion across Guns Bridge, although he found no one there because by his Commandant Bars Beasley knew nothing of this plan. The area was dominated by the central feature of Broadstown Station, at the end of the line to Athlone, an important British army barracks. But for some reason they decided not to occupy and garrison the station. Similarly, the citizens' army had been confusingly required to withdraw from Allen. The lack of cooperative communication was later discussed in Powers Beasley's books, the research for which included taking accounts from Thomas Ash whilst they were incarcerated. The failure of inexperienced volunteers to properly coordinate their deployments was a critical factor at defeat. Ash himself had only been appointed commandant shortly before Easter. They were armed only with a few rounds, about a dozen service rifles, a dozen wassers, and a dozen martini carbines. Some had only a shotgun against well-equipped army regulars. The battalion won a major victory in Athborne, County Meath, where they engaged a much larger force capturing a significant quantity of arms and up to 20 Royal Irish Constabulary ROC vehicles. Eleven ROC members, including County Inspector Alexander Gray and two volunteers, were killed during the five-and-a-half-hour battle. Twenty-four hours after the rising collapsed, Ash's battalion surrendered on the orders of Patrick Pearce. When he received the order to surrender, he had his doubts as he had difficulty believing the rebels in Dublin had not had success as he did. He sent Richard Mulgay to Dublin to verify its authenticity. On 8 May 1916, Ash and Eamon de Valor were court-martialed and both were sentenced to death. The sentences were commuted to penal servitude for life. Ash was imprisoned in Francois Cantonment Camp and Lewes Prison in England. While in prison, he wrote the poem Let Me Carry You Cross for Ireland, Lord. With the entry of the US into World War I in April 1917, the British government was put under more pressure to solve the Irish problem. The Valera, Ash and Thomas Hunter led a prisoner hunger strike on 28 May 1917 to add to this pressure. With accounts of prison mistreatment appearing in the Irish press and mounting protests in Ireland, Ash and the remaining prisoners were freed on 18 June 1917 by Lloyd George as part of a general amnesty. Death and Legacy 
Thomas Ashe was released from jail in June 1917 under the general amnesty which was given to Republican prisoners. Upon release, Ashe returned to Ireland and began a series of speaking engagements. In August 1917, Ashe was arrested and charged with sedition for a speech that he made in Balnally, County Longford, where Michael Collins had also been speaking. He went on the run, but was captured in Dublin and detained at the Carog, but was then transferred to Manchu Prison in Dublin. He was convicted on the sedition charge and sentenced to two years hard labour. Ash and other prisoners, including other Kerrymen, Fionn Lynch and Austin Stack, demanded prisoner of war status. As this protest evolved, Ash again went on hunger strike on 20 September 1917. As this was a breach of prison discipline, the authorities retaliated by taking away the prisoners' beds, bedding and boots. After five or six days lying on a cold stone floor, the prisoners were subjected to forcible feeding. On 25 September, Fiona Lynch saw Ash being carried away to receive this treatment and called out to him, Stick it, Tom. Ash called back, I'll stick it, Finn. That was the last time they spoke to each other. Ash was carried back, blue in the face and unconscious. He was removed to the Mater Misericordiae Hospital, which phrases the prison where he died within a few hours. At the inquest into his death, the jury condemned a staff at the prison for the inhuman and dangerous operation formed on the prisoner and other acts of unfeeling and barbaric conduct. They concluded that Ash had died of heart failure and congestion of the lungs, and that this was due to force feeding combined with the previous removal of his bed and boots which had left him in a physically weakened state. The death of Thomas Ash and the subsequent funeral procession had a striking effect on the attitude of the Irish people and became a rallying call to the standard of the Irish Republic. Though not on the scale of Jeremiah O'Donovan Ross's funeral two years previous, the military aspect of the funeral proved that the Irish volunteers were well on their way to being restored to Preminus 1916 levels. Thomas Ash's remains were removed to the Pro Cathedral on Thursday evening and placed on a catafalque in the main entrance. Requiem Mass was celebrated by afar. Michael O'Fanagan on Friday morning before removal to City Hall, where his body lay in state for two days. Tom Ash's body lay in state in the City Hall, dressed in his volunteer Republican uniform, and 30,000 mourners filed by. On 30 September 1917, the funeral procession over 30,000 marched to Glasnevin Cemetery. Michael Collins delivered the funeral eulogy in Irish and English, following the firing of a volley by uniformed Irish volunteers. The English eulogy being nothing additional remains to be said, that folly which we have just heard is the only speech which is proper to make above the grave of a dead Fenian. He was related to American actor Gregory Peck. Primary Sources Walt J. F. The Irish Rebellion of 1916 London 1916 Brennan Whitmore W. J. Dublin Burning The East Arising from Behind the Barricades Text Dublin 1966 Coakley J. Patrick Pearson The Noble Eye of Irish Nationalism Studies in Conflict and Violence 62-1983 p. 119-34 minus Hobson, Bummer, A Short History of the Irish Volunteers, Dublin, 1918, Oluing, Sean, I Die in a Good Cause. A Study of Thomas Ash, Idealist and Revolutionary Trally, 1970, Lawless Joseph, The Fighter, Ashbourne, Capuchin, Annual, 1966, p. 307-16. Mulcahy, Richard, The Development of the Irish Volunteers, 1960-22, in Cossentor, 42, 1980, p. 35-43, p. 67-71, 4p. 99-102. O'Malley, Ernie, On Another Man's Wound, London and Dublin, 1936. Secondary Sources Westy, G. Nationalism in Ireland, London, 3rd edition, 1995, Hayes McCoy, G. A. A Military History of the 1916 Rising, in K.B. Nolan, ed. The Making of 1916. Studies in the History of the Rising, Dublin, 1969, Martin, F.X., ed. Leaders and Men of the Easter Rising, Dublin, 1916, London, 1967, Townshend, C. The Irish Republican Army and the Development of Guerrilla Warfare, 1960, minus 21, English Historical Review 94 1979 p. 380-45. Tanchent, C. The Suppression of the Easter Rising. Bullen, I. In the 1994 p. 27-47.